To decorate or not to decorate was one of the biggest questions in architecture as the world moved out of the 19th century into the 20th. For John Ruskin in the 19th century, ornamentation was the principal part of architecture. But for a younger generation of architects, the notion that form follows function was emerging and decoration had no place in this vision. This debate played out in different ways in different countries. In this slideshow, I want to look at how this played out in the Netherlands by looking at four buildings. Hendrik Petrus Berlager was the most influential architect in the Netherlands at the turn of the 20th century. He was an equivalent to the British arts and crafts architects. His influences including the medieval brick architecture of the Netherlands and a faith in craftsmanship that was true to the nature of the materials. It was sometimes known as traditionalism. Situated on the dam rack in the centre of Amsterdam, the Stock Exchange is an essay in brickwork but with an iron and glass roof and stone facings. The southern façade seems to be a modern interpretation of a medieval hall with its clock tower and the large window under the gable. But there is no copying of historic styles. Inside this is even more evident. The iron roof structure is clearly on display. The walls are not plastered as Berlager would have considered this a form of deception. But instead the brickwork itself is used to express the structure while at the same time being used as a decorative material. Nonetheless decoration is still much in evidence as exemplified by the statue in the niche on the northwest corner of the building, the decorative panel under the window on the south elevation and perhaps most of all in the superb decorative panels in the cafe accessed through the three arches on the south side. His work was instrumental in the founding of the Amsterdam School of Architecture. This embraced an expressionist form of architecture whose features exhibited forms with much movement and colour and frequently detailed ornamentation. The main protagonists all came from the practice of Edward Cooper's Michel de Klerk, Johan van der Mey and Piet Kramer. The first major building in this style was the Schipvaart House or Shipping House in Amsterdam, an office building used as the centre for six of the city's shipping companies. The ship owners were looking for a not too sober building in brick. What they got was a large brick facade decorated with a multitude of ornaments, sculptures and friezes, its imagery drawn from the realms of shipping, the sea and trade. Inside too is a memorable staircase with a lavishly decorated glass ceiling. This is one of the earliest expressionist buildings anywhere, though the designers were criticised for the facades being just that, a skin over a concrete frame. It is also the case that the impact of the building would be much diminished without the decoration. The building is now a hotel just to the east of the city centre. In the early years of the 20th century Amsterdam recognised the need for good quality social housing to house the poorest members of society. So it was that during and after the First World War the most important buildings of the Amsterdam School were social housing projects. Het Skip is one of these designed by Michel de Klerk for the Eigenhard Housing Association. It contains 102 apartments, a meeting hall and a small post office which is now a museum of the Amsterdam School. It is located on a triangular site to the northwest of the city centre. It is a flamboyant scheme built of brick in the expressionist style of the Amsterdam school and vaguely resembling a ship in form, hence the name. 
Starting at the southeastern end, we will walk round the building. At the southeastern end is a low range containing the post office with flats above. Progressing along the north side, we come to a higher range in red and purple brickwork, bent into curves, culminating in decorated corbels. The building is punctuated by two tall chimneys with decorations in brick. The windows and doors are beautifully detailed. At the western end is the most flamboyant part of the complex, from which a brick spire rises from a two-storey range of apartments. On the south side is another block of apartments, once again beautifully detailed with curves described in brick and windows turned into decorative motifs. Inside, the apartments were spacious for the times, containing several separate rooms, as opposed to the single room that many had lived in before, and they had flushing toilets. Inevitably, there was a reaction against the flamboyance of Expressionism. In 1917, a group of artists and architects formed De Stael, the style. These included the painter Piet Mondrian and the architect Theo van Dusburg. According to van Dusburg, De Stael was a reaction to the modern Baroque of the Amsterdam School. The movement aimed to find its expression in the abstraction of form and colour, in the straight line and the primary colour upon which the art of Mondrian was based. Decoration for its own sake had no place in this vision. The most important piece of architecture to emerge from de Steyl is the Schroeder House in Utrecht, designed by the architect Gerrit Rietveld. Rietveld was also a cabinet maker and designed a chair which is inspired by a Mondrian painting consisting of planes, right angles and primary colours. The house is similarly designed from cubes and intersecting planes. The walls form a composition of rectangles which project beyond the points at which they join. The roof is flat which was very innovative for the time. Balconies and balustrades seem to float and extensive use of glass seems to link the inside and the outside of the building. The design is mainly white offset by the use of primary colours. It had been influenced by Frank Lloyd Wright's prairie houses in America, which had now been illustrated in Europe. The real revolution is inside, however. On the first floor, all the internal walls are movable, which means that a single space can be created and then partitioned off at night to create bedrooms. The downside of this is that everything in the bedrooms had to be ruthlessly tidy, as it could be on display when the walls were moved back. The Schroeder House was an important milestone in the development of the modern movement in domestic architecture throughout Europe.